Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today's protocol is an analytical digest. An analytical digest is a quick and easy way to identify a plasmid that you may have sitting around in a tube in the lab without having to use, for example, DNA sequencing. In the first stage of this protocol, we'll be using restriction enzymes which will recognize the plasmid at specific DNA sequences and cut it into fragments of characteristic sizes. In the second stage of the protocol, we'll use an agarose gel to separate out those fragments according to size, producing uh, a pattern of bands that is characteristic for each plasmid. By matching the pattern of bands that we see on the gel to the pattern of bands that we expect uh, for a given plasmid, we'll be able to definitively identify uh, a plasmid which otherwise just looks like water in a test tube. Let's get started. We'll be preparing three reactions today, and the first thing I want to add is the water. I'll be adding 72 microliters of water because we plan on a total reaction volume of 100 microliters. Uh, <clears throat> this is a slightly larger reaction volume than I would normally use for this protocol, uh, but I wanted to do a nice big reaction because I thought it would look better on camera. And this also gives us a little bit of extra plasmid material to work with, uh, just in case I screw it up. Okay. Next, 10 microliters of buffer. So this is a buffer specific to the restriction enzymes that we'll be using in this digest. Uh, restriction enzymes buffers provide two things. Uh, a pH buffer, because most restriction enzymes work best around neutral pH, and they're a source of uh, magnesium ions. So restriction enzymes and most enzymes in biology work much better if they have uh, magnesium ions. Okay. Next, the plasmid. So for this reaction, we'll be using PSB1C3, which is a, a standard biobrick plasmid. You can get the sequence from the biobrick registry or we'll make it available on the site. The plasmid that I'm using today has a concentration of 160 nanograms per microliter. I'll be adding 10 microliters of plasmid, uh, and that gives me about one and a half micrograms of plasmid total. Okay, now the restriction enzymes. The protocol that I have designed here calls for four microliters of each restriction enzyme. According to the manufacturer, one microliter of restriction enzyme is enough to digest one microgram of DNA in about five minutes. So if you do the math, you, will, you can calculate that I'm adding uh, quite a large excess uh, of enzyme for this reaction. And the reason for that is I just want to make sure that the enzyme quickly goes to completion so that I can have a pretty looking gel for the purposes of this video. Okay, so for the first reaction, the first restriction enzyme. Restriction enzymes are dissolved in glycerol, so they can be a little bit slow to pipette. Uh, you want to get just the tip of the pipette down into the glycerol, because otherwise the entire pipette will become coated in glycerol, and you'll add much more enzyme than you actually need to the reaction. The other important thing to 
remember when you're working with restriction enzymes is that they should always be cold. So I'm using a freezer block to keep them cold uh, while I work with them on the bench. Okay, so here's my reaction. Hold up the tube. Pipette in my four microliters of restriction enzyme. Close it up. The second reaction that I'm preparing will have two restriction enzymes. So again, four microliters of the first enzyme, just as before. Four microliters of the second enzyme. You'll notice that I'm changing my pipette tips after every operation so that I don't cross-contaminate my enzymes. And now the third reaction will get no enzyme at all. Okay, so this will be our negative control reaction that will show us what a plasmid looks like when it's not at all digested by restriction enzymes. So instead of adding uh, restriction enzyme, I'm going to replace that with an equivalent volume of just plain water. Okay, <clears throat> that completes the recipe for the uh, restriction enzyme digest. The last step in the protocol here will be to mix it. And my, my preferred method for mixing these tubes is just to pipette them up and down uh, with uh, at a, a large volume of pipette. So this, this pipetter is set to 72 microliters. So I just pipette them up and down a few times. You can actually see the glycerol uh, mixing with the water as the, the whole thing goes into solution. Now we'll incubate the reactions at 37 degrees for five minutes or an hour or whatever is the time indicated by the manufacturer. For this protocol, we'll leave them for about an hour. While we're waiting for our restriction digests to go to completion, we have an opportunity to prepare the agarose gel that is going to allow us to separate and visualize our DNA fragments. This will be a 1% agarose gel by weight. So I've got half a gram of agarose. And to that, I am adding 50 milliliters of TBE buffer. So TBE stands for tris boric acid EDTA. It serves three functions. First, it's a pH buffer. So DNA is most stable at a neutral pH. Second, it's got EDTA, which is a magnesium chelator, which means that any stray restriction enzymes or DNases that find our way into the gel won't be able to function because they require magnesium to function, and the EDTA robs them of magnesium. And the third thing it does is it provides electrolytes to carry an electrical current for later when we run our gel. Okay, 50 mils of buffer, half a gram of agarose, pop that in the microwave. Okay, our gel has been in the microwave for about one minute. Let's check the progress. It looks to be uh, 
heating up, but the agarose is not quite completely dissolved, so we can see lots of uh, pellets of agarose in there. We need the gel to be perfectly clear. The agarose needs to be completely dissolved so that we'll get a nice, smooth, beautiful gel when we run our DNA. Now it's been 90 seconds. Let's take another look. Oh yeah, okay. So you can see that the gel is boiling. Uh, the agarose is completely dissolved. We have a nice, clear, smooth gel that is going to be perfect for visualizing our DNA. Now we'll just leave that on the bench top for a few minutes to cool down until it's uh, cool enough to handle before the next step. Okay, we've let our gel cool down a little bit. Next, we'll add five microliters of DNA stain. So this is gonna allow us to visualize our DNA bands by making them fluorescent. Nice bright red DNA stain. The gel is prepared. Now we'll prepare the mold. I've got the gel tray here that's going to hold the gel. And the comb, this will produce the tiny wells in our gel that will hold the DNA. Now we pour the gel very carefully just up to the top of the combs. And that, so, <clears throat> Now the gel will take about 15 or 30 minutes to solidify. Now, the moment of truth. We very carefully pull the comb out of the gel. And voila. We've got a perfectly formed agarose gel, nice smooth gel with perfectly formed wells for loading our DNA. Now that goes into the buffer. TBE, exactly the same composition as we used to make the gel. The next trick, now that our plasmid DNA is digested, is physically loading it into the wells of the gel. For that, we'll be mixing the DNA with loading buffer. So, I've got a little trick for this procedure. First, I'm going to cut a couple of squares of parafilm here and lay them out flat on the bench. Then, I'm going to pipette tiny drops of my loading buffer onto the parafilm. So, this is a, a standard 6x loading buffer. It contains glycerol. and a blue dye. The purpose of the glycerol is to dissolve the DNA and increase the viscosity so that when we load the gel, the DNA will sink down to the bottom of the wells. The purpose of the blue dye is so that we have something to look at as it migrates across the gel so that we can track the progress of the gel while the DNA is running. Okay. So these are my three tiny drops of loading buffer, five microliters each. And to those, I'm going to mix, right here on the parafilm, 10 microliters of each of my three digestion reactions. So I very carefully pipette the DNA into the loading buffer and then pipette up and down a few times to mix. Doing the mixing here uh, on the parafilm, uh, first of all, it allows us to save some of our DNA fresh in the tube without uh, uh, sort of contaminating it with loading buffer. And second of all, when we load the gel, it's going to allow us to make sure we get every last drop from the parafilm into the gel.
Okay, now, very delicately loading the DNA glycerol mixture into the wells of the gel. This is one of the technically hardest things to do in a biology lab, which is not to say that it's actually hard, because it's not, but it does take a little bit of practice. So, we pipette the entire drop from the parafilm, go down into the well, and very gently release the DNA so that it sinks down to the bottom of the well. So a few things you want to be careful with here. You want the DNA to fill the pipette all the way to the very tip so that there's not, for example, uh, a bubble or an air gap in between the DNA and the tip of the pipette. If there is a bubble, then you'll end up loading the, the bubble into the gel and then it will bubble up and it will spill your DNA everywhere. So you want to make sure that the DNA comes all the way to the tip. Okay, and very gently, we fill three wells right next to each other. And then, to finish the gel, I'm going to add 10 microliters of ladder. So this is a, this is a commercial ladder that we're using that contains uh, DNA fragments of various sizes that we can run as a kind of standard along the gel. So by comparing the DNA fragments uh, in our reactions with the sizes of the DNA fragments in the ladder, we'll be able to know approximately the, the sizes of the DNA bands that we're seeing. Uh, this is a commercial ladder and it's, it's pre-mixed with, with loading buffer. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to either side of our DNA samples so that we can get the best pos possible estimate of the size of our DNA bands. All right, so make sure the gel is nice and straight. Put the cover on, turn it on, and I'm going to set this to uh, 100 volts and we'll run it for about 45 minutes. The DNA will gradually migrate down the agarose gel uh, and the bands of DNA will separate according to their size. To visualize our DNA, we'll be using fluorescence. You remember that fluorescent dye that we added to our gel? Well, that dye has bound to the DNA and migrated to the DNA. These fluorescent filters will excite that fluorescent dye and allow us to visualize the DNA.